Good afternoon, I'm Michelle Patsakis, and on behalf of Well Schooled, it's my pleasure to welcome you today to a very special program. Well Schooled is a company based in San Marino, California, which specializes in connecting families in the San Gabriel Valley with educational paths and resources to enrich and transform a child's K through 12 journey. One of our ongoing events that we offer is our lunch court. Usually we would be meeting at Well Schooled where we would socialize and share a meal while learning about premier educational offerings in our community. But with the current stay at home orders because of the pandemic, we are continuing our series, but virtually. As a performing artist and arts educator, I say that the show must go on. So thank you, Jerry, for being with us today. First of all, what is Spotlight? Spotlight is a program of the Music Center, and we are in our 32nd year now. I can't believe that. Um, I've been with the program. This is my, uh, I'm going into my 20th year, but we are a scholarship and training in the arts program for high school students in Southern California. Uh, we're completely free for students to apply to, which is, I love that. It's my favorite thing about the program. And we are only open to high school students in Southern California. So we're not a national program. And um, we give away over $100,000 every year in scholarship money to students at all levels of participation. So we encourage students of all talent levels to participate in Spotlight. Um, and there are seven categories that students can participate in. We have an acting category. There are two vocal and not what we call non-classical voice and classical voice. And then we have two dance, a ballet category and a non-classical dance category, which could be anything from belly dancing to Bollywood to tap modern, anything. You can dance it, you can apply. And then we have a classical instrumental and a jazz instrumental program. And we, uh, we encourage students to apply in as many categories as they want. If you're a triple threat, if you're a quadruple threat, if you can sing, dance, act, play an instrument, there is a place for you to participate. And we are an education program first and foremost. And then there's this element of a uh, competition because I don't think that um, competition is bad as long as you are learning to compete against yourself. What did I do yesterday? What am I doing today? And what can I do better tomorrow? I think that is how you bring a real educational component to any sort of competition. And I think it's really healthy to think of it that way. Um, we also, I think what makes the program very, very special and unique is that we provide written feedback for, for every student who applies uh, at all of the different levels that they apply. So if, if their first level is they submit a video application, they're going to get very detailed, copious written notes from our panel of judges on what they're doing that's terrific in their program and what they're doing that the, the panel would love to see them improve. And then little hints, you know, on how to do that, adjustments, uh, techniques to make those changes so that they can improve. I, I think of those, uh, those written feedback letters as like little mini masterclasses in and of themselves. So I, to me, that's very, very important. Um, so that's basically the outline of the program. Everything ends in an amazing uh, show at Walt well, Disney Concert Hall or the Amundsen. We're going to be online this year because clearly we, we can't be in a theater, unfortunately, but we're, be, we're very excited. We're going to do our online virtual performance on May 30th, and we're going to highlight the, the finalists, and um, it's pretty incredible. So full disclosure, I have the experience of participating in Spotlight as a parent of an artist that... Uh, a very talented artist, I might add. <laughs> she entered all four years in two categories and, um, and then was a classical voice winner um, her fourth year. Um, so everything you're saying, I have experienced firsthand, but most people don't have that you know, fortunate experience. So I want everyone to understand that they can be a part of it 
how do you know if your school or your city is eligible? Well, we uh, are allowed to have students from San Diego up through Kern County. I mean, it used to be just Santa Barbara, but now we've extended it into Kern County. So there are eight counties. Wow. Um, if you're going to ask me to name them all. <laughs> no, that's okay. But that's pretty <laughs> expansive. So, you know, we think Los Angeles Music Center. And so I, I, I realized that once you know, I sort of did a deeper wow. dive, but that is pretty, you know, expansive. People and I love that you said your daughter, Ariana, what I loved is that she was able to do it. You can do Spotlight all four years you're in high school, which I love because the program grows with you. It obviously grew for her. Um, I don't remember whether she made it into semifinals or first year or not, maybe no. not, probably not, but she got that written feedback. She looked at it, looked at it with you because you're an artist with her teacher and was able to see what she agreed with. Maybe there were things that she didn't agree with, but I think it's always good to get feedback because it's a great check-in with your teacher. And some kids you know that we have don't have access to arts resources or they don't have private teachers. And this way, they still have the ability to have a group of people assessing their work and giving them very, very positive feedback. This is not like uh, a TV show where they are like yeah, taking the opportunity to get, you know, to uh, up their ratings and to say nasty things to kids. We are about encouragement, support, love, really providing students a very positive way to get feedback. Um, it's, there's nothing negative about it. I won't allow it. Um, I really want kids to learn in a positive manner so that it, their confidence gets improved, that their self-worth and their self-respect stays intact um, before they audition, because we have usually a auditions that the kids can come to. And we'll, I'm sure we'll get into process in a minute, but I want them to really have their self-worth and, and self-respect intact while they go through the process. For them to get that kind of feedback um, that's so detailed and constructive, there's, you know, positive, it's not that it's all positive, but, no. the, but the comments that are made help them, as you say, grow and make improvements even through that one season, whether they're sent on or not. I, I, from what I recall, um, Ariana got her feedback prior to knowing whether she was sent on or not. And um, that was really interesting too, because she's looking at it through a lens of not knowing, did they quote unquote like her or not? Um, but it's just um, pure sort of artistic um, observation of what she had submitted. And, um, and then if she, if and when she did move on to the next level, um, she was able to use that and sort of up her game. Yeah, so students start the process by submitting a video of themselves and each category is a little different. The actors submit a monologue, the classical voice students submit um, an art song or an aria. The non-classical voice will be one song, the, the ballet and dance is one variation, one solo, one, you know, I think classical instrumental is the only category where you are required to submit two pieces, one from the Baroque classical and one from the Romantic contemporary era. But you, it's really easy. There are like three minute videos that you can upload in your house. You can be singing here, you can be singing everywhere, any, or dancing anywhere you want, in your studio or in a, uh, at home. You upload that solo, that's it, it's free. You fill out an application, it takes about 10 minutes to upload the application. And you are immediately put into the Spotlight family. Our judges then start to, um, to adjudicate and watch the videos. I have letter writers that compile all the information. They send it back to the students, as you just mentioned, and then the judges choose students to move forward to our first live round. And <clears throat> over half the students who apply be, are able to come to move forward to advance to that next live round. And that's where we really do a lot of coaching and mentoring with students on how to audition in front of a live panel of judges effectively. 
Um, how do you walk into a room? How do you introduce yourself? How do you perform uh, and deal with your nerves? And most importantly, what do you do when you walk out of that audition or interview? And, you know, these are skills that you're going to take into college auditions and job interviews as well, because most of the time we walk out of a job interview or a college interview or an audition and somebody says, mom says, or dad or the teacher says, how'd you do? And, you, know, you, and, and you as the artist goes, well, I, I don't know. I think I was okay. You know, I, you don't know. And, and I want them to learn how to develop these muscles of self-discernment because some of your teacher's not in the, your parent is not in the audition with you. So I want them to walk out and think to, for themselves, what did I do in that room that really worked for me? And what did I do in that room that I could do better next time? So that it's constantly a learning program for them. And so once that audition is through, the judges write more notes, they get the students get another round of letters you know, improvement from the first round to the second round. And then the judges choose students to go into the next round, which are the semifinal rounds. And that the semifinal rounds, the students get master classes. And the master classes, most of them are open to all students, whether they've advanced to that round or not. So our classical voice rounds are open, our non-classical voice, the acting round, these and the uh, piano, violin, they're all open to students at all of the preliminary levels. And meanwhile, we're giving out scholarships at all of these levels too, which I love, um, merit awards and, and semifinals, honorable mentions. Um, and as your daughter received the grand prize final uh, awards, the highest award is $5,000. So from those semifinal rounds after their master classes um, with incredible artists, um, as you know, they're the, the top leaders in their fields that they would come and teach. And then those students uh, from semifinals, the judges choose two students in every category to advance to our grand prize finals. So that's kind of the process of it. So I love that your positivity around the attitudes and the learning component with auditioning. You were a ballerina, you're an actress, a singer, you come to this with a very rich and sort of world-class experience as a working artist. And I'm sure you did many auditions. And thousands. <laughs> and um, for the students, this is all new to them. So I think your um, position of making it a good experience for them that is gonna sort of lay a foundation for their future. And like you said, whether they're, they continue in the arts or it just ends up applying someplace else, um, it will help them. So I was amazed that you are there before their audition, you greet them, you help prepare them, I think emotionally, as they're walking into that door, you do what I would say are sort of affirmations I don't know if you mean to do this, but it's something that I teach my students and I do with myself where you're giving yourself affirmations and you're, you're almost giving them a script in their mind of how to go in there and be able to do their best. From what I recall, you go into the audition, so you observe what happened. So you say how their teacher can't be there, or the parent can't be there as an observer, but you're there and then you come out after the student comes out and then you sort of decompress them. I have a cadre of amazing uh, facilitators that work with me. So it isn't just me because we have 1400 kids. Um, I, I think that there are certain categories that I try uh, to be there because they're um, just, they require a little bit more technical help. Um, and maybe I was just there, I think, at all the, the classical voice auditions at that particular time. But I have a, an enormous uh, group of people who are who I train to do uh, the same kind, the same kinds of things that I do because I think it's very important. I want this program run a certain way to keep it safe, to keep it healthy emotionally for these young artists. I want these these students to go out into the world 
and to be healthy emotionally. Um, I think that's vital to 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 this to all of these art forms. That there's you know there isn't a level of fear. There's already enough fear just going into an audition and worrying if I'm going to do a good job. I want to then for the artists to start thinking about themselves artistically and not just as at technically, you know, because there's the technique part of who they are. There's the artistic part of who they are. There's the business end of who they are. And, and we need to help them, these, these young artists, kind of learn to be, um, I'm not sure quite what the word is, but to think about themselves gently and with a safety net for themselves. So that when, an example, when uh, your daughter walked out, uh, I think it's not a great idea to just automatically say, no, you were great. When, but I think it's important to acknowledge your own feelings. And I'm sure what I said to her was, let's talk about your feelings. You know, what did you think was, every, I think usually artists walk out of a performance or an audition and they either go one of two ways, either I'm fabulous, I don't do anything wrong, or they go to I'm horrible, I'm the worst thing ever, I'm giving up. I think we go to those two places and I, I think it's natural. And I want you, as I said before, I want you to really think about these two areas, most importantly, what did I do in there that was good? Because there's always good things. I don't care if all you did good was you walked in there with a smile on your face and said, hi, I'm so happy to be here and to be able to work with you, to audition for you. You know, so th think about the good things about what you're doing. And then think about, instead of like saying to yourself, what's the worst thing? What could I do to improve for the next time that I have an opportunity? Because there will always be a next time. You know, until you get to be maybe as old as I am and okay, maybe that's enough. But certainly when you're young, you know, there are so many opportunities and I want you to build a healthy skin so that you're not thrown because not everyone's going to be as nice as I am, as nice as you are, as nice as some people are when you go into an audition. Some people, you know, will sit there and it'll be just like a blank face and you'll be auditioning or they'll be writing while you're auditioning and my judges are writing. And I want to prepare kids to say, hey, you don't know what the energy is like when you walk into an audition room or an interview room or a job interview, whether it's for college or, you know, for anything. You think, because they're not, the judges are not don't have a smile on their face that they think oh my god I don't like this they don't like me and I say to them you know they may be writing they may they had a bad day maybe they had a bad morning maybe they had a fight maybe they're writing down oh I forgot I got to get milk down you know afterwards and we we try to read a room as as being an artist and you never know so you have to have a real sense of yourself a sense of I of focus and commitment and dedication to what you have been working so hard on. You've been rehearsing, you've been putting a lot of time into the, this audition, and this audition becomes your performance. And that's what I kind of work with them, or whoever it is, the facilitator, before they walk into that room. What did you set out to do with this? Let's be strong. You know, I was like, think of yourself as being, you know, like the warrior princess, you know, or the warrior prince when you walk into that room. I, I have a sense of who I am. I've been working hard for this, uh, you know, for this experience, <clears throat> for this opportunity. And I'm going to go in there and I'm going to do my thing. And I'm going to say thank you. And I'm going to walk out. And, if the, and, and sometimes they don't work out the way that you had thought they were. Sometimes it's not, you know, the best audition that you, you, did in your rehearsal and it happens or nerves get the best of you then we, we walk out and if i'm not there and if you're by yourself i want you to think about what did i do there was good what did i do that i can prove in front so that you become better equipped for the next audition D does that make sense of course oh good <laughs> yeah and you know <laughs> so speaking about sort of being sent on or not being sent on or this kind of attitude of um appreciating the journey um, you've had some amazing winners, you know, that have been presented on, uh, on the stage of Disney Hall, like Misty Copeland, um, like Lindsay Mendez, who won a Tony Award a couple of years ago. But you also have participants that weren't sort of the grand prize finalists, but still went on to incredible success. Two that I can think of uh, offhand are um, Josh Groban 
and Ben Platt, who is most famous for Dear Evan Hansen. So um, I think that's also interesting for the students to learn that they also didn't quote unquote win and look where they ended up. Right. Not only that, but neither Ben nor Josh actually advanced to semifinals. Now, um, you, you know, look, everybody matures at a different time. And it's not a level of your potential, whether you become a finalist, whether you become a semifinalist, whether you make it into preliminary two, that is not a measure of your potential. You want to keep growing as an artist. I think that is the most important thing. And for people like, uh, well, I mean, I could name you a lot more people even than Josh and Ben who didn't become finalists, but they are, uh, they, they could be titans in the tech world right now. They're nurses, they're doctors. I know so many of those stories too. The arts are a foundation for your life, as you know. Uh, the, the skills that you learn as an artist, like teamwork, uh, dedication, organization, um, that, that, that skill of the show must go on no matter what. Uh, my, the CEO and president of the Music Center, Rachel Moore, who was also the CEO of American Ballet Theater, she always says, you know, when in doubt, hire a dancer because you know what you're getting with an artist. Um, she knows that no matter what's gonna happen, I'm gonna meet my deadlines. I'm gonna do, you know, I, I have the wherewithal to, I understand what rigorous study is like and dedication is like. I know what, it, what how important it is to follow directions because of my background. And all artists have that ability, so, uh, it's, it's vital, I think the arts are vital, just, I mean, not only to getting a job, but I, I, I always think parents worry about their kids who, are, who want to be artists, you know, what's gonna happen? Well, I mean, when you look at the Otis report that came out about the creative economy, especially in Southern California, where one out of every, I think it's four jobs, uh, is tied to the creative economy. That's astounding. So when you think about visual arts and graphic arts and um, behind the scenes jobs, uh, stage managing, costuming and wardrobe and, uh, and hair and makeup and joining a union to becoming a stagehand and music production, it, the list goes on and on and on and my my background, I think, is a testament to that, where I started as a ballet dancer, I had a career-ending injury, and I got into commercial dancing, and then I started taking acting to help my dancing, and from acting, I started thinking, I want to help the next generation, and then I got into arts administration, and now I'm producing, and I'm doing lectures, and so you never know where the path is going to take you, and I really think um, it's a roundabout way, from what you originally asked, to say the importance of these skills that we hope to teach through the audition process uh, to help students through their lives. I mean, I couldn't, I do a lot of public speaking and I couldn't have done that without, I mean, it's tied to my job without my acting skills. So I think that's very important for parents to also realize because uh, speaking skills are very important in any job that you're gonna be doing. But let's talk about their, their journey um, if you are a freshman in high school and you like acting or dancing or singing or you play an instrument, um, what level do you need to be? Does it matter? Do you, does it matter if you have training already? Um, it, can you go with natural talent? Like how, how should they consider their sort of candidacy? I think that there is a space for every child that has a love of an art form. And I don't care if all they can do is sing happy birthday. I want them to apply to Spotlight. I want them to get their little toes wet. I want them to see what it's like, you know, to audition, what it's like, you know, the simple act of filling out an application is intimidating to a lot of parents. It's intimidating to a lot of young people. Um, and I, I don't want that to be a barrier because Guess what? 
at 13, 14 years old, 15, you're going to have to think about eventually filling out a college application, filling out a job application. And I have heard from so many parents and students who said, you know, we were really intimidated about filling out our college applications because once we got there, we said, oh, we've been doing four years of, of doing spotlight applications. So this is a piece of cake where we're not scared of doing this process. So there's that, you know, as well. And, and filming a video of yourself because so many colleges now require pre-screens. Um, and, you know, I want to backtrack a little bit because uh, we, something I neglected to mention was we have something called the Spotlight Academy, which is every September. Uh, it's going to be September 20th this year. I, it, it'll probably be digital this year. It'll be online. But normally we invite kids and parents and teachers to the Spotlight Academy every year in the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion. Um, we usually have around 500 people come. And it's a series, it's an all day series of workshops and classes for students in how to pay for college, how to make a great pre-screen audition video. I have a class on what I wish I would have known before going to college where I bring alumni back and they talk about their first year and what they wish they would have known before they went to college. I have classes on how to be a commercial dancer, on what college panels are looking for, uh, how to pick songs. I mean, there's like a myriad of subjects that are so fantastic. So we were going to do a big college fair this year in connection with the Academy. So I'm still working that out with um, USC and, and, a, and, a, and college admission consortiums. So we'll see how we're going to maneuver that this year. But that is a wonderful way for students, even if they don't want to do Spotlight, just to, because, because that's also free. Um, and to have information on that as well. It's an amazing, amazing day. But again, obviously, if you're a classical instrumentalist, um, playing more than chopsticks is going to be important if you want to do spotlight because we do have that requirement of one piece from one era one piece from another jazz is a certain amount of skill set but you know it, it can be a very preliminary level for for that for the non-classical uh categories like non-classical voice like i said if you sing happy birthday really passionately and love to sing and you know you there's an artist that you love on the radio and you love to listen to them and you want to like sing that come in and sing a song you know if it's dance especially if it's non-classical dance and you love dancing at, at school and you know and you've had you haven't had a lot of formal training but you love to dance film film yourself dancing and, and there's a place for you there and on the opposite end of the spectrum, if you are that student who uh, wins a lot of competitions and scholastic awards and artistic awards and uh, you're very, very serious about your art form, clearly there is a place for you as well in Spotlight. There's a place for everybody and I encourage students of all skill levels to do this program. I think you'll learn a lot emotionally. You'll grow from the program. You'll become a better uh, human being and, and kinder to yourself as an artist from being in this program. Right, I love that. The, also, they have this kernel of interest and in in, in sort of some raw talent and passion. Um, once they're an applicant, as you mentioned, there's so many educational openings for them that they wouldn't have had access to prior. And in, you know, the master classes, as you mentioned, the, the college fair, the academy. Um, but I recall getting, you know, access to concerts and performances, to free tickets. Um, and students may have the chance to see artists, hear um, performances. Um, learn information that will change the trajectory of their lives. And maybe they didn't have training prior, or maybe they weren't as, you know, um, certain about what path they might want to take. And by learning something through one of your programs, it could just spark something that will send them on a different path. And I think that is so exciting. 
I feel so lucky that I work at an institution that has access to the most, I mean, just the most phenomenal artists in that the Music Center houses and is the custodian of four theaters and those and Grand Park. Um, but those four theaters are the Amundsen, the Mark Taper Forum, the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion, and the Walt Disney Concert Hall. And within those theaters are our resident companies. So Center Theater Group, the Los Angeles Opera, the LA Philharmonic, and the Music Center presents dance. So we are able to work with our resident companies and they are usually just, I mean, so kind. It, it, it's given, you know, just the generosity that they have in when they have, when they're able to, to allow us to give tickets to students. Uh, clearly this year is gonna be a little, we don't know, but we're hoping that the theaters will be opening soon and we'll be back and having people in our beautiful theaters to watch and that we'll be able to, you know, uh, invite students to participate and to come and, and watch these beautiful performances because there's nothing like seeing a live performance, as you know. It, I love it. There's so much creativity right now and in, in this age that we're in that we can, I encourage students to go online, to go to YouTube and watch these wonderful artists that have come before them. Uh, you can learn so much from watching these beautiful um, artistic geniuses who, 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 are, who are doing the same thing that you, who accomplish the same thing that you want to accomplish. To go watch those performances on YouTube and then go to live performances because there's nothing that can, that, that can take the place of watching something live. Yeah. And I want you to talk about what is going to happen this year with this grand finals concert performance. The live concert is really special and it's, it's finding a balance, knowing that these kids are anywhere from 14 to 17 years old, you know, they're not hardened criminals, you know, they're young, you know, they're young children, you know, I mean, to me, that's really young. It's just, I know I talked about them, they're young adults, but, um, you know, they're still young. And we want to create a balance between being a professional and still being, a, you know, a student. And so uh, we, I want to impress upon them, you know, my production team and all the people I work with want to impress upon them the importance of what is it like to be a professional while also still having fun and still enjoying this, you know, it's a, it's a night of celebration. We are honoring not just the 14 students who advanced to that, to that final production, but we are honoring all 1,400 students who participate all year round in this in, in, in spotlight in this program because they are representing all of those the, those students who have put their heart and soul into into every aspect of from filling out the application from filming their audition from rehearsing their their pieces to um, receiving feedback graciously and reading it and writing me notes saying thank you for the feedback and I mean they're not required to write me notes but I get a lot of notes from students you know that the and teachers saying that the the, the feedback dovetailed perfectly with the in-person uh, work that they're doing with the student. So that is the most meaningful thing to me that again, every step of the way you're learning something, even at that grand prize final performance, you know, that that is in and of itself still a learning process for them. Um, this year is uh, going to be very, very different, but really exciting and I'm, I, I can't wait. Uh, we have Lindsay Mendez is going to be the host this year. And as you said, Lindsay uh, won the Tony Award for Carousel. And she's now on the hit CBS series, All Rise. And uh, she's, she's an alum of Spotlight, which, you know, I love. She was in the same year that Adam Lambert won. So it was the two of them. So she is going to be on. And we're going to have some surprise guests. And, um, and she's going to be hosting. And then we will... The students are performing their pieces at home. 
or they're going to be the dancers will be in a, a they will be performing in a studio instead of a on stage but their studios have been gracious enough to open them the studios up and allow the student to come in and you know to set a camera up and film um, minimal amount of people it's like one or two people and that's it and all the we normally have an orchestra and a band playing for us on stage and all of the musicians this is incredible in this day and age that we can do this all of the mu musicians with our, the help of our musical director have recorded their individual pieces at home in their studios and then our musical director has put all of the set you know the sound together to create the, the soundtrack for each student to perform to. And uh, the, the students have worked with uh, their teachers in concert with our accompanists for classical voice and classical instrumental. And uh, they will be filmed. So it'll be uh, this melange of these beautiful performances with interspersed with like little background on each of them and little videos on, on each of them. So you get kind of like a, it's easy. And you know this, Michelle, it's easy when you watch these, you come to the theater and you watch this, these students perform to think, oh, this must be like a 32 year old performing. And you forget, <laughs> no, it's she's 15 or he's 16, you forget. And so we are gonna be doing these little, um, little mini bios, film bios on them. So you really see who they are and the challenges that, that they may have had to overcome to get where they are. So I think it's gonna be very inspirational too. So what's the date and time and how can we watch that? Yes, it's going to be on May 30th, which is a Saturday at seven o'clock. And we are going to be streaming the show from our website. I believe it's musiccenter.org forward forward slash spotlight finale, I think. Um, and it's, then it'll eventually live on YouTube. But I think that's what it is. Music Center, two C's in the middle, dot O-R-G forward slash spotlight finale. So we've focused a lot on um, the participants and the process and all of that. But we may have uh, people that want to support Spotlight and the Music Center and this incredible program. Um, as you said, you're giving away $100,000 worth of uh, scholarships, not to mention all of the programs that you're offering. And um, how does someone get involved um, and how can they help and what is the best way for them to help? Well, thank you for asking that. Um, you know, we, in order to keep the program free, uh, the music center has to raise over a million dollars every year. And we do this through private donations and foundations and grants, but a lot of it comes from private donations. So uh, we don't want there to be a financial barrier to any child who wants to participate in this program. So, um, there will be ways to, I think, text to give during the performance, the online performance. Um, and then people can also just email me. Um, and you can email me with any questions too. Uh, the emails, um, my email address is spotlight at musiccenter.org. And uh, I can direct, if people want to give, I can direct them to the right departments through that, or they have a question about the program. Um, that goes right to me and, and I can answer questions about the program through that as well. well. Wonderful. Thank you. So I just want to say when I first saw you, I thought, I feel like I know this person. Who is this? I, I didn't know your name or anything. And then of course, come to find out later that you starred on the television show Dallas, which I used to watch. And so... <laughs> um, so, yeah. so, um, so we, uh, we'll have um, a bio on you, but you um, really reached, uh, you know, a pinnacle in television and, and film, um, and yet you sort of left that behind to do this arts administration and educational sort of journey. Um, what brought you to it? What was how did you get involved? I really wanted, I had reached a point in my career 
where, I mean, I tell this funny story. I was like, the day that I took this job, I was literally on hold, what they call on hold for a, a couple of commercials and, and guest starring things. And I called my agent up and I said, literally, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm giving up acting. And they were just like, what? What are you talking about? You're an old romance. You're an old. I was like, I'm done. <laughs> I had just reached this point. It took five years, actually. And I reached this point where I really, I've been going to a lot of auditions and I thought, you know, there's a better way to do this. And I really, really wanted to help the next generation of artists. Um, you know, this is now almost 20 years ago. And I just, I, I, I knew that we could do a better job. I knew that I wasn't feeling really comfortable in auditions in terms of my self-esteem. Uh, and I thought, I don't, I don't want to, I, I want to grow from this experience. I want to help artists, young artists, because I uniquely understood starting dancing at four years old, being very dedicated to, to these art forms and, and moving into singing, moving into acting, that I really wanted to help the next generation be healthier in terms of how they felt about themselves, how they put themselves out there, how their self-esteem felt after they left performances and left auditions. And I just thought that was very important. Artists, a lot of times, unfortunately, uh, kind of wait for somebody else to give them permission to do something they're overly qualified to do. And I thought it was very, very important that we start retraining artists to think of themselves in a very professional manner and to have interests outside of just their art form so that they become healthier human beings, so that they can develop leadership skills, give back to the community, become involved, involved with social uh, justice uh, issues, social activism, whatever their passions are, I want I wanted that for artists because we really arts the arts I felt move uh, history forward. They move the society forward, and I I thought it was very very important uh, for students to get a healthy perspective of where they fit into the world. So for me. Uh, I started out um, at the music center. I grew up in Los Angeles, so I had been going to the music center, center since I was little. I went to the Blue Ribbons Children Festival, and then I got a chance to produce it many years later. And I thought, I want to get a job there. And it just so happened that uh, Synchronicity, uh, my friend, was asked to, to um to produce a, a program there and she couldn't. She said, do you want to do it? And, and then I, I, I got my feet wet and I did that and then I did something else and, and it just, and then this job opened up and it was sort of like the perfect, the perfect you know, opportunity for me to give back to. I, to me, I feel like I'm giving back to the community. Well, thank you so much. Is there anything else that you think we should know about or <clears throat> that is important for um, anyone in the community, whether they be a, a student that is thinking about doing a parent or an educator? I think just that we really want parents and teachers to, to be able to trust that they will, that their, their children, their students will be met with a lot of love and care in this process. That we respect young artists, we respect uh, children, we respect students, we want them all to have a positive experience, we want them to feel good about themselves in, in whatever level they participate, even the students who, you know, may do their first year, and, and again, you know, you can do it all four years you're in high school. We have a, a, a student who's a finalist right now in ballet. She did it one year. She didn't do it the next year. And then she did it this year. So it's, it's, very, it's a very easy in and out thing. You know, you do, you do what makes you comfortable and there's a space for you. And I, I just want parents to feel that we will be treating their kids with respect and with um, with, you know, with love. Uh, what else is there? There's nothing else that's more important than that, I think. What 
better spotlight do we have on the arts than right now during this pandemic when people are using music and artistic expression to help us cope, to send messages, um, to educate. Um, it has never been sort of more clear yes. how important um, the arts and arts development is and also how important it is for us all to have it in our lives. So with so many things being canceled, it is so um, heartwarming, but just important that the Music Center and Spotlight did not cancel this program and that you're moving forward and that you're giving these students um, that opportunity during this time when they've lost so much and that you're still giving them this chance to shine and to develop. So thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. And you know, just one last thing, you know, the arts are for everybody and the music center throughout this, you know, pandemic and hopefully as this ends, if you go onto our site, um, it's called the Music Center Offstage, and we are constantly now uploading digital content for um, for kids of all ages. <laughs> um, you know, because we want to support the inner child in all of us, no matter what age you are, to really explore the arts, to celebrate the arts, to know how important the arts are in every aspect of your life. As you just said, we the arts move the culture forward. And I don't know what could be more important than that. So thank you so much for this opportunity and platform to talk to all the parents, all the students, all the teachers. It's just been my pleasure. I'm very grateful. Well, thank you. Thank you for your 20 years with Spotlight. And we look forward to many more. And um, until next time, thank you, Jerry. Thank you.